Hello everyone, my name is Lena. I'm one of the organizers of Raccoons. As we're all due to the current situation of staying at home, we thought this is a great opportunity for all of you to learn some new tech skills, learn some new programming skills, and most importantly learn how to interact with each other, working teams, and um, complete these very, very exciting and interesting challenges we have prepared for you about each of the topics that we're going through uh, every week. Just a heads up, if you have any questions on the go, please do ask them in the um, online workshops channel in Slack. Um, and no matter how silly the question is, you're more than welcome to ask it there and we'll, be, we'll try our best to help you and try our best to solve anything that you have. Okay, so um, first one up, just want to say this is our first online workshop and this is going to be about the very, very basics of web development. It's going to cover HTML and CSS at the very top level. So in case you've gone through this before and you know some of these topics and you've gone through some of the resources um, on your own or in university or in a workplace, this is most not, likely not really for you as it's for the very, very beginner stages. Um, but please do keep a heads up as every week we're trying to go into more detailed subjects and more detailed um, examples. And these workshops are aimed to help anyone who hasn't gone through any of these topics or any of these languages um, or um, technologies to help to actually finish the challenges and compete in them on their own or in the teams. But if you, as previously said, if you have gone through them, you're more than welcome to already wait for the challenge and compete in that as well. So just a heads up as well, we will do another brief uh, introduction after this about what the challenge actually expects and how to com compete or complete that on your own in case this is not enough for you to understand how to go through it. Okay, so I think we can start. Um, first one up, I just wanted to kind of give an overview of uh, web development and how it divides. In the most common scenarios, it divi it's divided into two fields, front-end and back-end. And the thing that mostly covers uh, um, front end is involving also HTML and CSS. So these are the things that you should know. Front end um, is concerned about the uh, overview of how things look on the website, on the application. It's concerned about the looks, the, the wording, the um, animations, the the colors and where thing where everything's placed and that's the most important thing that a user feels um, that they can find where each button is um, and they feel like it's an it's an, a nice experience to be at that exact application or that that website that is about what a front end developer does and what they're concerned about on like an umbrella of all of those things so into that, whenever you're creating a website or an application, um, a very common thing is to do wireframing. And there are a couple of tools for this. So wireframing is when you design the looks of the page and the interactions of where each button goes and, and when you press it, what's the, what's the next page and how does the next page look. That is the thing that you do um, and you use a couple of tools for this. I have outlined um, one of the most popular ones and some of them I use myself. Sketch is one good example um, that is very, very useful and very intuitive, very easy to learn. Miro is a bit more complicated. Um, both Sketch and Miro and I think Balsamic as well, um, they require pricing. But a good thing about being a student is that there are so, so many, res many resources that are free where you can uh, tap into them and use them just because you're a student, just because you still have a working student email. So I would suggest for you, to any of you who still have that, um, use them and um, get a free version for all of these. Um, another important topic that I wanted to go into is text editors. Um, so when we write code, we use a software application where, where we actually write it. The same goes for Google Docs where we, when we um, prepare a document, we use Google Docs or we use Microsoft Word. The same goes for tabs and the same goes for slides. Mm -hmm. We use specific applications for specific um, 
specific purposes. The same goes for text editors. Um, they are used for writing code and they make writing code simpler. Uh, one of the most common examples is Sublime and the second one is Atom. Both of them are uh, have free, free trial versions and free versions for the long term um, that you can use in order to try out how they work. And the good thing about them is they uh, color co code different code um, structures that really helps you to get an overlook of how, how it all looks in the outskirts of things. Um, another third version I put in as IDEs and a note of why I put textures in IDEs is for you to kind of grasp and understand that there is a difference. So there is one thing that are called text editors, which are more like simplistic versions of how to um, read and write uh, code. And then there are more complicated uh, software such as IDEs. And the difference is that IDEs have much more integrations. They have um, usually a tool that, that is called debugging that allows you to much more freely, much more easily to um, grasp, to find the bugs or find the, the faults or the small minor errors that you've created in your code. And they have a lot of other things that actually text editors don't. But each of them is used for specific purposes and when you're writing such simpler co code and just doing one HTML page, it's always much more easier and quicker to just use a text editor. Um, Sublime and Atom are text editors and the most popular um, IDEs that I put in there that are usually the most commonly used are IntelliJ and Microsoft Visual Studio. Both of them are also requiring, requiring a monthly price for you to use them, but as previously mentioned, as with these resources and with others, there are a lot of student discounts, there are a lot of uh, things that you can really leverage while you're a student and uh, tap into them. So in case you can um, and you're interested into this, I would, I would suggest for you to try out IntelliJ and apply for it, download it and, and try using it and, and try how it feels. Um, a quick heads up for those um, who haven't gone through any of this before, we're going to today use Atom as our text editor, but in case you don't have the time to download anything, there's always a text editor on your operating system that is there as default. Um, on Macs, it's, it's text edit, so what you can do is you can press space and just find it through there. Um, and another one. <clears throat> Sorry, on Windows is a notepad that you can also use. Okay, um, I outlined a couple of basic things that we're going to go through, a couple of basic topics. Just for those of you who, who are not here currently um, watching this online video, for, for you to know what we have gone through and what are the things that we can cover in the future or what are the other things that you should look into. Just to give it like a basic thing that yes, this is the checklist that we've, we've gone through in here. Okay, and then afterwards I've put in here a couple of um, useful resources. W3 schools is something that we're going to use today as well. We're going to um, go through all of this and they're the baseline of resources for HTML and CSS and they hold the latest information about all the tags, all the information that you should know about them. So this is what we are going to use and this is what you should use in the future after this workshop as well. Another key thing is um, very, very useful research is this Frontend Master's Handbook um, that anyone is more than welcome to use. It, the good thing about this is that it, as you can see, it's a recap of 2018 and looking forward. So it does these um, outlines in the future and it updates um, and gives you kind of like an overview of what has changed and it gives you a very very detailed and very useful infographics of um, what are the resources, what are the tools, what are the, the technologies that you should know and get into such as I can show you in this one is one of my favorite ones that kind of shows you the path of what you should know, what you should learn and what are the topics that you should actually uh, either cover or at least know about them. And here you can see the very in a very detailed manner it says like hey learn the basics and then move on to this and this and this and this. And it's very useful in a sense that it also can help you understand how are these blocks and these um, words and these tags that you buzzwords 
but like that that you heard somewhere else how do that work in the larger scheme of things and where does bootstrap strand among everything else and for example if you've heard react.js and where does it stand in the larger uh, scheme of things and how is it similar to something else and here you can see like basically it can go under all of this topic and it can go all under all of this umbrella so it's very useful, it's very useful to go back to, always to just, just bookmark, bookmarking it and then going through in bits and pieces because it's a very lengthy resource, but it's the key one where to find the newest information about everything and what what's the the next thing that to look into and what's the, the coolest thing to use, um, let's say now. Okay, so I think um, we can start and we can move on to um, opening Atom. So as previously mentioned, I'm going to open Atom and use this as my text editor for today. It's very lightweight and very, very um, simple to use, easy to learn, and it's a really good starting point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file. So file, new file. Um, and I'm going to save that as index.html. Index.html. And I'm going to save it here in my workshop one, um, which is the folder, as you can see, that I've created on my desktop just for the purposes of this workshop. So I'm going to create that. Um, um, we're going to cancel this for now. Index.html is a standard uh, wording for the first um, first HTML page, so I would suggest for you to follow it currently. In the future, things can change and you can rename them and you can decide on something else, but this is a standard for um, an entry point page um, that you should kind of keep in mind. You can obviously uh, name it anything, one.html or raccoons.html, and it will work as easily as well. Um, but as mentioned previously, for current purposes, let's remain it as that. Further on, um, I wanted to show you the the main W3 school, schools and kind of navigate through that and start um, going through some of the beginning topics that they have in there. And then you can move forward and cover all the other stuff that we haven't today on your own. So the first one up is as they um, say, they ex explain what HTML is. And we're going to start with a simple version that they have in here, an example that shows how to set up a simple HTML page that has just a title, um, a heading, and maybe just one paragraph. As you can see in here, um, the first line on every file, and we're going to do the same thing, it says doc type HTML. That defines that this is HTML5, and this is the document type that we are going to write in. Um, so we're going to start with that. Um, for current purposes, I'm going to type everything out in the future. Um, there are a lot of things and a lot of a lot of um, finishing up um, wording that you can use in Atom that can actually finish up the the tags and finish up the sentences for you. And we're gonna see that when we go. So I say my document is HTML. The next one, the next tag that I need to put in here, next one up, is definitely all and always by default gonna be HTML. HTML is gonna um, stand for the fact this page is going to be an HTML page and all the code that is going to go into these tags is going to be HTML code and the browser when it's going to read it it can recognize it by these tags and it can say okay I know how to read this with tags and this the, a tag is called uh, this everything that is goes into these um, triangular brackets is called an HTML tag and the most common thing in HTML is that you have what, they, what they're called as opening and closing tags. Opening tags are like this, and closing tags differ with only one difference is that they have a slash. So slash HTML. And this is going to be our closing tag. So everything that we're going to put in middle is going to be the content that is actually either displayed in our page or either defines what's going to be in our page or all, or any links that should be in there. And any there are two main uh, sections that are always holding into HTML. In between these tags, and you keep must keep in note that all the code in the future is now going to go in between these tags. There shouldn't be anything that goes outside of them or, or before in here anything that we do um, here today. 
So the first things first, um, we always need a head with a closing tag and a body. As you can see, um, Adam suggests a couple of things to me when I'm writing. It suggests to auto-finish them. We're going to start doing that in a second, but for, for now, um, just to write it all out and keep it a bit slower, I'm doing it on my own. So in the head tags, as they call them, um, they say that all the meta information goes there. I would kind of explain that all the overview on information goes in between the head, the information that is necessary for the website to run, for the website to um, kind of work successfully. And usually that information involves any links to, um, let's say, fonts, um, and most importantly, titles. And there's also a couple of other things that, that specify kind of overviews or, or things that you should apply to all the pages that will be linked to this one index HTML page. Because most of the common things that there's one H one index that HTML that links to other quite a lot of other pages as well. So as a starting point, what we're gonna do in the head um, section is we're gonna to we're gonna do a title of the page. So we're gonna say um, title. In between the title, we're going to put, um, as you can assume, the title of the page. So I'm going to say um, the raccoons online workshops. This is going going in between the title tags. Um, I just want to quickly show you how it all actually looks. So what we're going to do is we're going to save all of this. So currently we only have a head um, section with a title and we have a body section where all of the content of how it all looks um, is going to go but currently we haven't put anything in there. So save it. I'm going to open my folder of where actually my index.html file is. I can also find it from here but for the current purposes let's look at it from here and open it, as you can see, with a browser. Currently mine as default is Google Chrome. So I'm opening through there and as you can see nothing shows. That's because I haven't actually put anything in there. But one thing you can see up in here is the title of it, the title that we actually put in the head is going into the Raccoon's online version in up here in the top um, top um, level of um, the website and this is where this is the this is the one that we named inside of the head tags so let's start putting something inside actually the body and let's start putting something on our page so as the first one's up um, we should cover what um, heading is so let's start typing a heading here I'm gonna start auto filling things so there are six variations of of a heading that you can put in HTML, S starting from H1, which would be the biggest one, and going down to H6, which would be the smallest one that you can actually apply in here. So I'm going to do the biggest one and say um, online workshops. Shops. Oi. Shops. Save it. And then do a slightly smaller one just for you to see the difference and say not six let's do is five and say um, basics of web development go back run it again and as you can see now it shows us online workshops basics of web development and this is the thing that um, we just created. Both of them are headings. This one is a larger one, this one is a smaller one. As you can see, you can always obviously change the fonts of things in the future using CSS, but sometimes it's very useful to use these ones as a, as a default. Ne next things up, after we have our headings, we should move on to creating a paragraph, some more lengthy information about what this workshop is actually going to be about. So we're going to say P and then finish up and say this is our first online workshop on HTML and 
CSS. We will cover the following topics. We will we will cover the following topics. Okay, so we have a paragraph. It's a more lengthy information. It's not meant to be a heading. It's more meant to be as the content of the website. This could go into more and more and more um, details, but for um, for now, we're just creating the starting points. So you can see that here, um, it's already there. Um, we uploaded it, and we can move on to creating um, the next variation of what we can do in HTML. So next things up is creating a list. So let's try creating a list. Um, there are a couple of uh, options of how to create lists, the same as you can see in um, Google Docs or um, Microsoft Word, is that when you're creating lists, you can do numbered lists, um, bullet points, uh, you can even change the bullet as something else, it's not a circle or a rhomb or a rectangle or whatever you actually wish in the end, and you can change it to anything basically. Um, so in HTML, you can have the Two are the ones uh, by default that we can use. One of them would be ordered list um, that we can already complete. Ordered list uh, would go as one, two, three, four, things that you're counting up on. And it's by default going to add numbers to your list items. So we're gonna say unordered list and within our unordered list tags, so in between our ordered list opening and closing tags, we're going to put list elements, list items, as um, Adam already suggested. So one of our first list items in here is we already created a paragraph that says this is our first online workshop on HTML and CSS. We will cover the following topics. So the first one, as we would say, is um, let's say we're going to have headings in here, um, another list item that's going to be um, paragraphs and another list item um, which we can do as list very inception wise so now we have three, three list and elements and as we've set them as order lists we can check out how they're how it's gonna um, put them in sections and as you can see um, as I mentioned before um, it put them automatically in a numbered list. Similarly, we can always say that it's an unordered list and change it to that. Save it and an unordered list is going to change these to just bullet points. And we can remain with that currently. Okay, so um, we've gone through lists, we've gone through paragraphs, we've gone through what a heading is and how to set up that. We've gone through the fact that we always need an opening and a closing tag. So what we can move on to next is how to create a link to another page. Um, the first things first, we um, there's a specific tag, as you've noticed previously, um, for each different element. For a list, it's a different tag. For a paragraph, it's a different tag. And for a heading, it's a different tag. The same, um, the same pattern follows for a link and will follow for images and so on, so on. For any element that's going to be created, most of the time it's going to follow the same thing and it will have a different tag. So specifically for link, we use this tag called a ref. We can put it in here um, and And as you can see, um, href stands for the fact that you need to put in a link that will go in there and that is going to link um, to somewhere else where you want to go. Very commonly, um, what you can do is in, in here is you can actually put, rather than putting a link saying www.facebook.com, you can put a link that actually links to a another page that you have created on your own. Let's say we now have created an index.html right here in this folder we could also create a new file and name it um, example1.html and then we can link it through here saying that example1.html. This would be very useful for the challenges that you're going to create. But for current purposes we're gonna just use the raccoons org um, website and see it in here. Just copy this. We're gonna paste it in here and 
closed like this. The second thing in here that you must know is that after you've closed this section of href and put in a website or a link to your next file that you want to press, you need to create actually the wording that is going to link. Or let's say you actually need to create the link uh, that is going to point to this website because this is actually not going to be seen on the website itself. So what we do here is we can say the raccoon's website and now close it. Save it. And here we can have the raccoon's website. Press it and it should lead to our raccoon's page. Fairly easy, I think, is that. Okay, um, let's go back. And now the last one up with HTML. Um, I think we should create an image and we should learn how to do this. So. Um, right here, we're going to create an image um, tag, and in the source, we're going we similarly as we did with the link, we're going to create a link to the image that we found that we actually want to use. I already found an image of a tuba, just to make it a bit quicker, but for just an example purposes, um, you can look for images anywhere and you can look for images and download them and put them in your folder right in here. I would put them in workshops and link them through here and just post them as a link and put in the name, let's say, tuba.jpg. Another version is to uh, put a link from, let's say, a Google image. If I would Google tuba, I would be able to find quite a lot of images in Google. Um, and just use one of these. The key thing to remember here is that if you're creating a website, if you're creating an application that is um, available to the larger public, um, then you should keep in mind that you should go through the settings and make sure that you're allowed to use this image for uh, reuse. So what you do is you type in the word for the image that you're looking at and then you find it through the usage rights and you say, hey, uh, please look for the images that are labeled for re reuse and I can actually use them and I can actually post them in a publication. There's also a variation for labeled for non-commercial reuse but just make sure that you're aware of the all the variations, you make sure that you're aware that you're using an image uh, that is someone else's and keep in mind to not do that if this is a public website. Okay so I'm just gonna use a link to this website. Um, I'm going to post it here and I'm going to tag it as tuba just to make sure that I have my image. If this image is as big as it is in here, most likely it, if I haven't set any details of how what's the size of this image, it's most definitely going to be very very big on the site. But let's check it in here. Okay, yeah. So we have our image <laughs> Very big tuba. We have our raccoons website. We've gone through our lists, paragraphs, headings. We've gone through the very basic setup HTML page. And the next one up is that we should start styling it and start deciding on how things are going to look. What's the font? What's the colors? What's the sizing? So we're briefly going to go into the details of how things l actually look um, on our website. So um, what? Is the first thing that we do in here is we create a style in the heading um, section. In between these two uh, tags, we create the CSS tags that are called as style. Style and style. In between these, what we're going to do is we're going to do all the styling of all our elements in here. So as previously mentioned, very similar to HTML, each of these elements has their own tag. So most likely what we're going to do in CSS is the same thing. Every time we're going to style something specifically, we're going to reference it by its tag. So for example, if we wanted to style all of our body in here and let's say change the background color of all the body, all of our website and not for it not to be white or for it to be in a different color, what we, what we can do is we can say, we can tag the body and we can say, hey, I want to change the body. Inside of the body, I want to change the background color. So 
What we can do is there are a couple of variations for, let's go to the CSS side in uh, W3Schools. Um, and it already has a section about backgrounds, specifically about backgrounds and another one about colors that is very, very useful to go um, through for your you as well. So here you can see all the properties that a background can have. One of them can be color, you can also put an image, you can repeat the image, so it kind of repeats itself uh, in one side or the other. Attachment, positions, there's quite a lot of variations. The first thing we're, we're, that we're going to do is we're going to do the color one, and we're just going to color it in a different um, color. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say background color and set it to something by default. So there are couples that are uh, there are a couple of colors in uh, HTML and CSS that you can um, already recognize by their wording. Let's say let's put it like that like that. So let's say pink, um, red, blue, white, gray, black. All of these can be set by default. You can just say you don't need to type in any numbers. You can just say gray. As easy as that. Save it. And now our website background should be gray. You can see very weirdly gray, not that appealing, but this is what we can get. Further on, um, you can actually create your own colors and that becomes a bit more complicated and that becomes um, the section of what I think the, the color section actually tells you about. There are variations of color schemes that you can use. One of the most popular ones is uh, tied in here. It's called RGB um, and it stands for red, green and blue. Um, each of these um, stands for how much of this color, how much of red, how much of green, how much of blue is there going to be in the color that you're creating. Each of these values, red, green, and blue, you can choose a number in, in between 0 and 255, where 255 would say this is the highest amount of red that we're going to put into this color. Um, 0 is going to be the lowest amount of red or green or blue that we're going to put into this color. So whenever you're creating in between numbers of this, they're going to do variations or like Let's say you can create a violet. If you're going to do all of these numbers as 255, 255, 255, which would be the highest number and the highest uh, number for all of these red, greens, and blues, you're going to come to a white color. Hex is a very, very commonly used, and we're going to try using that as well, is a six uh, number um, color that is actually basically defined uh, through a mathematical um, kind of calculation and you can very easily Google that uh, and do it yourself as well and you can see how it's done how you can get from RGB to hex and how you can actually calculate yourself if you have the free time to do it it's actually very fun and very interesting to really understand how how these numbers correlate and how they're actually calculating and defining colors based on numbers and why do they have all these different color schemes and on why shouldn't we just stay with one so as you can see by default in um, Google, um, there's an RGB variation or an hex or, hex or even all of these uh, different color schemes that are at least on the web uh, less commonly used and more commonly used for printing. So in here, um, oh, it's getting very slow. Okay, so in here we're just going to use that. Um, we can go through um, and choose something in here that is light blue, um, something like this, and decide to take this hex color instead of staying with just gray and put it in here. And then remain with a still fairly weird, but at least a much more nicer background for the current purposes. Another key thing is that you can always um, change a specific um, change a specific element of the website. Let's say we wanted to um, change um, the color of the wording. We would say um, on ordered list that we have in here, I want its color to be, um, let's say, pink. And as you can see, our unordered list, all the list items are here as pink. 
Um, you can change the color in here to blue, to whatever you wish, but that is just kind of an example of how you can change the backgrounds, how you can change the elements, and how you can change quite a lot of things. The same thing in the first one up that we wanted to actually do, um, this one we're going to delete, is change our image size. Um, the easiest way here would be just to say width 100 pixels, um, let's remain as a bit smaller. Here we have now a smaller tuba. The next thing up that um, we should do is we should go into how um, we can use larger sections of this website to change them. Currently, we've only changed specific things. We've only changed specific um, wordings or just backgrounds. There's another version of how you can interact in between HTML and CSS and change these larger blocks of um, elements on your page. Um, in HTML here, you have a div section in here. Um, um, that defines of how you can... Um, create kind of like a division of objects that you have created on your own. This is called blocks. And as you can see, there's this element called div. It's the div tag, but it kind of stands for a division or a selection of, um, of a couple of elements. You can always choose to select one element or you can choose to select a couple. We're going to try and select all of this, our paragraph, together with our unordered list. So what we do in here is we say we have a division and we come up with a class name for it in order to easy, easily reference it when we are changing its style in CSS. So we're going to come up with a class name. So we're going to say class and our class name is going to be, um, let's say, lists. I can't think of something better. <laughs> and closing div tags. So what we have in here, we've created a division. So all of this inside of these div tags now will remain as a one element. And we can now define it in, our, in between our style tags and now style it together. And we can say we want only this to be a different color. Everything else stays the same, but we're changing only this in between in these division tags. So what we're going to do in here, we're going to say dot class and we're actually going to use this body's background and put it in class and say hey we want only this section to be ooh, sorry background color I think everything is fine div here's our classes yeah Everything should be fine. Class list. Ah, sorry. Lists. This is usually how it goes with silly mistakes. Okay, so now we have our section that is here and that is um, very specifically styled. All these um, couple of elements, lists in our paragraphs are styled in a different color. There's other things that are, that where we can actually change the amount of coloring that is around it and we cre can create borders around this specific um, section of elements that we, we've chosen. This is called um, very traditionally as the box model. So there are three elements. Uh, one is called padding, one is called um, border, and another is called margin. These are three elements that you can use in order to kind of navigate and style elements around your page and decide that, okay, here I'm going to have a box of text. On the other side, I'm going to have another box of text, but it's going to be in a different color, or maybe it's going to be in a circle, or maybe it's going to be in just differently styled. This is how you can navigate and style things around. Uh, this is something that you can also find in HTML, in um, CSS, sorry. Um, in here, to kind of better understand it, here's an example of where this is the content. For example, for us, this would be our paragraph and our lists. Um, Padding. Padding is the one that um, creates spacing in between your content. Um, this is what we're going to show and we're going to see in a bit. So let's say we have our lists, we have our background, and here we're going to create padding. We're going to say 20 pixels, save it, go back, and now we have, as you can see, um, 20 pixel padding. Padding would be just spacing, spacing in between our content and the border of 
the the division section that we've created for our elements. Um, so we've said this is 20 pixels. Obviously, you can change it and you can actually change and create not only 20 pixels around everything. As you can see, we have here 20 pixels, here, here, and here. We can also define and say, I only want padding top to be here. And now I only have the top up, um, the padding top um, with the spacing and nothing else is spaced. Um, the same goes for padding, um, let's say, left. And now we're only going to have it on the left side, as you can see here. But for the show purposes, we're going to just remain with the padding. The next one up will be the border. And here we can define a border. Maybe that's very useful for uh, times when we don't want actually colors. We just want a border around our text, such as this. We just want it to be just smoother, smoothly or created. So, as you can see, I create a solid border in here. You can create different kinds of borders. You can really check them out in here, but most of the time it's fairly simple and it's usually used, yeah, when you want to divide different sections around and um, around your, your website. The final one is the margin. The margin is the one that defines the uh, spacing in between your section and the next section kind of creates an upper uh, spacing in between upper or lower or whichever you define or whichever you choose this time we're going to do the same as with padding just say let's say 50 pixels so that we can really see the difference in between there being one and there not being one so as you can see we just created a margin from all the sides um in our website as previously mentioned with padding the same goes for a, a margin. You can choose to create it on the left side, right side, bottom and top as well and not choose to create it all around. But that is really up to you and that is how you want the page to look better. It's very useful when you're styling different elements in the page. Okay, so last one's up. Uh, we needed to cover fonts. Um, as you can see in here, um, we have the generic font. We haven't defined anything new. We thought this is the useful one that we have in here. If you want a different font, if you want to define or find a different font, the, use, the easiest way is always to go to Google, as mine is already auto-completing it. I will do just fonts, find the fonts in here. And here you can see display Google fonts. This is very, very easy to use and it's very uh, easy to understand. The good thing about this is that you can always type the, the name that you want and see how it actually looks with... Um, oh, sorry, I was typing it, we're looking for fonts. You can see where how it actually looks with different fonts and choose which is the one that you like better. You can choose the coloring, the size and so on. Um, we're just going to use the first ones in here. Um, let's stay with something, something. Um, ugh, indie flowers, no. Um, let's go with this one. I think we, could, we will be able to see the difference. That's the most important thing that we can actually um, see how they differ. So what I do is I choose this font, I press a plus, and you're given a um, kind of a small um, selection box where you can see how you should use this font if you want to use it in your website. And it's very, very useful and very uh, easy that they actually explain it for you and you don't have to go into the other resources to understand how to use it. It actually says this here. To embed your selected font into a web page, copy this code into the head of your HTML document. Very easy. Okay, so we're going to use this. We're going to go into our Atom. Um, and paste it in here, in between our head. Let's do it here. Next one up, um, it says specify in CSS um, where you want to actually use the font. So this is the, the place where we're going to um, copy and paste this. And we can choose where we want to copy and paste this. For our current purposes, we're going to just do it in the body. So all of our body's text is different. It's in, a, in the same font family, but different from the one that we have in, uh, here currently. You can, as previously mentioned, in between the body, you can define other things and you can say, I actually want only the heading to be in this different color, uh, to be in this different font. Okay, so let's save it, see how it looks. 
So, as you can see, in here we have a very nice change font. Um, you can change it only for this, you can change it only for this. Currently, we're going to just remain with the, all of this, um, all of the website's uh, details, all of the website's elements to be in this specific font. Um, this is the overview of what we've gone through. Um, we've gone through all of the elements that we've covered in here in the presentation. Forms and SVGs, we're going to go into a bit uh, later, but file paths, colors, uh, divs, class, IDs, images, lists. This is the key things that you should know. There are a couple of other resources that I uh, told you. Go to front-end masters, go through W3 schools, go through all of these resources, and there's a lot of other sections that you can easily manage and navigate through. But this is basically um, kind of like a starting point that I've given you of where to start, what to use, how to set up, how it actually works. And further on, there's just loads of resources that you can tap into and that you, you can leverage at this point. Okay, that's it for me now. Um, wait for the challenges, they'll be up in here, and we'll continue helping you out with the challenges and posting videos about them as well, and how to complete them, and how to help you to define and design them as well. But you're more than welcome to do them yourself and decide on what's the better version of how to actually complete them. Okay, so that's it for me. Thank you, and bye.